three. We are talking about the triangle sum and exterior angle theorems. So if you haven't made them yet, please do. Make the note card exterior angle theorem or make the note card triangle sum theorem because we are going to talk about their proofs, at least the first one in this lesson today. To be ready for today, have a, for this video, have something you can draw a straight edge with, have a highlighter, have maybe even like multiple colorful opportunities of things to write with, pens, pencils, whatever. Uh, reason abstractly and quantitatively, that's what we're going to do here. Reason abstractly and quantitatively. Construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. Now, if you look back on the previous video, the previous lesson, page 322, the angles you tore off of the triangle form a straight angle. A line. Let's use a line to help prove that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Like, that's the triangle sum theorem. That's what I wrote on the bottom or the back of my card, right? I put the definition, I put an example, I even put the page number where it is, where we talk about it. You should make a note card for that one as we need to use it from time to time. Uh, consider the diagram shown. All right, so here we go. Consider the diagram shown. Draw an auxiliary line parallel to AB through point C and identify the three adjacent angles at point C that form a line. I highlighted auxiliary line because that seems to be like this uh, random or you didn't know that it needed to be there until I drew it because I'm the expert but uh, you will all the same. An auxiliary line is a line drawn to help complete a geometric proof. So we're gonna draw one using the ideas or notions that we've come up with over time, but it doesn't really necessarily like show up when we first started. It has to be parallel. So I'm gonna draw one line. Can you draw more than one line through point C that's parallel to AB? I mean, with Euclidean geometry, no. Only one line can be drawn. So we will draw that line parallel. I'm kind of using a little bit of cheats, like I'm using the black line of the protractor and trying to keep it evenly spaced from AB as I slide the protractor up through C. And there is my auxiliary line. We need to label some angles. So um, it's good with numbers, good with using numbers. So I'm gonna say this is angle one, angle two, Angle three, we'll put a four in that corner and a five in that corner. And so the question is, here, zooming in for a minute. The question is, what do you know about angle three, angle four, and angle five? In other words, how would you describe their relationship? And, and you might say that those three angles actually meet along the edge of the auxiliary line, something kind of like the pieces of our triangle from page 322. So we'll say it like this. We will say uh, angle one and uh, angle two and angle three. Actually, those are the angles in the triangle. Okay, say that are in the triangle. But angle four, angle three, and angle five form a straight angle. AKA a line. I mean, that's it, right? Angle four, angle three, and angle five form a straight line, form a straight angle 180 degrees. So uh, if we're going to then use that fact, write a paragraph proof to prove that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180. This is our prove statement. We need to identify the given, we need to identify the proven. So I'm gonna say this one, I'm gonna say right away, look at that diagram, isn't it? Isn't it a thing? In this diagram, we can say right away from the very beginning that angle four and angle one are alternate interior angles, right? We also have the idea of parallel. So given angle one is congruent to angle four by alternate interior angles and given the angle 2 and angle 5 for the same reason. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 5 for the same reason by alternate interior angles. Okay. So if they're congruent, we also get to say this then. We get to add up 
then the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle five, right? We're gonna go ahead and add up the three angles that form that line. It equals 180 because they are uh, linear pair or supplementary because uh, angle four, angle three, and angle five form a line slash straight angle. By substitution, we're going to take and replace 4 with a 1. Replace 4 with 1. And we're going to replace 5 with 2. So that means by substitution, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle, uh oh, get in there of angle two plus the measure of angle three is 180 degrees. Those are the interior angles of a triangle. Angle one and angle two and angle three form the interior angles of a triangle and are supplementary. There might be other ways to say this. Again, pause, freeze along the way. But it is true now in that we have a list of compelling arguments using da, 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 this diagram that the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And from now on, from now on, you now have the triangle sum theorem as a tool that you can use to justify how you know there are 180 degrees inside a triangle. We're going to use this one multiple times when we talk about the interior angles of a polygon. So keep it around. Use it. Put the page number when we get there. Thank you for watching this video. Think about this question. How can you use substitution in our paragraph proof? How did we use substitution in the paragraph proof? If you can spot where that happened, maybe you are making your way towards understanding proofs after all. Thank you for watching this video. We're going to be on page 324 next, so I'll see you there. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye.